Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Mike Filiber here for Morning Prayer on Wednesday, the 4th of September. Yes, the 4th of September. I had to look at the calendar real quick. We're here for Morning Prayer, and our Morning Prayer will include Psalm 24. That's where we are in the Psalms. Psalm 24, and then Mark, the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9, starting at verse 1. <clears throat> psalm 24. A Psalm of David. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Selah. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. I remember my Old Testament professor, Ralph Davis, my favorite Old Testament professor. Well, they were all wonderful, but pointed out one time that that first line in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, that you could take that and you could say, uh, America is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, or England, Britain is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And learning to say that and recognize that changes the way you then pray found that very helpful. Anyways, that was Psalm 24. And now Mark chapter 9, the gospel according to Mark chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. And Jesus said to them, truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God after it has come with power. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what, is, what this rising from the dead might mean. And they asked him, Why did the scribes say that first Elijah must come? And he said to them, Elijah does come first to restore all things. And how is it written of the Son of Man that he should suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come and they did not, and they did to him whatever they pleased as it is written of him. Delightful story, a very clear reminder. Here's Moses and Elijah testifying of Jesus and Jesus is the center of Moses and Elijah. And then the voice from heaven, the father speaks and says, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. And a good question to ask is, are we listening to Jesus? Well, that was Mark 9, 1 through 13. Let's pray. Lord God in heaven, we pray. We pray that we who are prone to be like Peter and James and John and, and to not know what to say because we're terrified at times and discombobulated and, uh, and we'll try to throw out easy remedies, Lord. Help us to hear you as you say, this is my beloved son, listen to Jesus. May we listen to him. Lord, we pray that uh, you would be with uh, people that we know who are grieving right now, people who live around us, who have lost loved ones recently and are just devastated at heart and broken. We pray for your comfort for them. We pray that we might be a means of grace and comfort to them, channeling to them the very grace and comfort you have bestowed upon us. And Lord, we pray with the psalmist, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The United States of America is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. 
Canada is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Mexico is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Lord, may we remember and may it change the way we see our moment now and our future. Lord, bless us through this day and may your face shine upon us for good. In Jesus' name, amen. There you go, friends. That was a little bit longer than I intended, but it was for my heart. So receive now the Lord's blessing. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.